I would agree. So those of you that are just joining us, uh, having a little technical difficulties, you're not seeing myself, but you're seeing our guest, Chris Pollinger. Chris, tell us everybody, hey, everybody. Uh, a little bit about yourself. And 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 um, I know you and I met at a Christie's conference and, and you guys, you and uh, your partner, Jennifer, led a round table discussion at a Luxury Connect as well. And really, uh, you know, really enjoy getting to know you uh, through the you know last couple of years. And Love what you're doing. So tell everybody a little bit of background about you and your company. Yeah, we, we have a lot of, Michael, you, you and I, we have a lot of crossover. Um, we're based out in, in LA and we work with um, we're consultants for the luxury real estate game. So we work with the brands, uh, the luxury brands. We work with um, a number of the companies, uh, a lot of the largest teams that were, are working in luxury, especially the Uber luxury um, on both sides of the coast, although we do have a number of clients that represent in the middle of the of the country as well, and uh, also agents that are looking to build teams. Uh, Jennifer Berman, my my partner, is a, a very media driven um, and has was one of the original uh, voices and and kind of helped put together the million dollar listing franchise. So a lot of those a lot of people that you see on those shows are, are clients of ours or friends of ours. Um, she was just she was a uh, producer and cast member on Listing Impossible on CNBC, and so a lot of that um, again kind of goes to that Uber uh, Uber luxury. That's the marketplace that we serve uh, most. And she handles the the media and that side of it, and I handle the business side and profitability and making sure that uh, agents, teams, brokers, and brands are are structured for profitability and and really have great businesses that at the end of the day. Okay. And, uh, you know, profitability is the name of the game, right? Nobody wants to get in this business. This is not charitable work. Uh, so before we go a little bit into that, uh, again, for those of you that are joining us, uh, again, we are, are having a little technical gift difficulties. I do have our, our guest today on, Chris. Uh, obviously, you can see him, but not me, and that's okay. Uh, the good news is he's the reason that you're here today. He's going to be sharing some great nuggets. He works with a lot of uh, large teams and brokerages, successful teams, on how to that are profitable, but they want to be even more profitable. So this is our second Luxury Lunch and Learn. Uh, we launched it Friday with Megan Berry from Who's Who in Luxury Real Estate. And I know Chris, you and Jennifer have attended those events before, and uh, you guys have been sponsors. Uh, it's a great organization. And um, we have uh, our schedule lined out for the next week on these shows. So Wednesday, we're going to have uh, Tristan from Lab Code Agents. They have over 118,000 agents in their group and we'll get different perspectives. And then Friday, we have uh, my dear friend, Leslie Akers, who runs the luxury division at Keller Williams. And then next Monday, we have the uh, the CEO of the largest um, the largest real estate, uh, Miami Association of Realtors, the largest board in the United States, I guess second largest to Toronto in, in North America, or probably the world for that matter. Um, so just giving you a little preview of what's coming in the pipeline. So Chris, you did a great job with your introduction and you talked a little bit about helping uh, your, your, your agents, your large teams and offices be more profitable. What's your ideal client for, for your company? Yeah, we we love we love with people we love working with people that are growth oriented. Um, you know, we we uh, we tend to uh, thrive with people that um, are a little all over the place. Uh, we 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 like working with people that are a little crazy. Uh, I mean, it, it's funny because if you look at the website or you look at our brochure of you know who our ideal client is, you would you would. You know, we, we tend to say people that are growth oriented and people that want to, you know, make a difference and actually have a, a legacy footprint in in, uh, in their lives and in their businesses. Uh, where we take a very holistic view of real estate and, and uh, look at look at people's lives and people look look at people's businesses and their financial picture and kind of as yeah, that all encompassing, um, you know, package. Uh, but if you if you said, well, Chris, who's who's really the your raving fans and who are the people that uh, you guys really excel with the people that are just are, are a little uh, a little south of the, the crazy mark. <laughs> well, that's probably why it's uh, probably why you and I identified well together. Um, I know Jennifer is, uh, you know, she's not on today, but uh, again, real quick, I'll ask you a couple times. What's the best website uh, way for people to find out more information about you and your company? 
Uh, it's bermanandpollinger.com. Uh, you can also find me. Uh, yeah, bermanandpollinger.com is is the best uh, okay. best place to, to 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 get a hold of us. All right, perfect. You can you can also search Chris Pollinger on on uh, any of the social platforms, and you can find me as well. And feel free to reach out and, and say hello. All right, perfect. Um, so we have, you know, people, uh, you know, that are going to watch this or watch the replay that are from different backgrounds, some with large brands, some with small brands, some newer agents, some more advanced, uh, some are already in luxury, some, you know, want to increase their average sale price and work smarter, not harder. Um, any words of advice for agents looking to break into luxury, Chris? You know, as far as breaking into luxury, realize that it's all about confidence. Um, so much, so much of this business at every level, but especially in the luxury business, is really about just feeling that you have the you have the right to be there. Um, there's nothing, there's nobody that's in luxury that is any better or any worse than anybody else. It's just they have a different skill set, and it's easy to you know you can learn the skill set. Um, but the biggest, the biggest thing that I, you know, that I, I see with people that have done well in luxury is, you know, to, to have the confidence. And so some people are just born with confidence um, and some people have to develop that through education. And that, Michael, I think that's where your programs are so uh, critical to the industry is you really help people get educated and certified so that it builds their confidence and helps them understand what they need to know in order to play in that space effectively. That's a that's a good point. Um, I appreciate that. But absolutely, you're right. Uh, confidence uh, is contagious. So is lack of it. Right. So helping agents, uh, especially in this unprecedented time we're in right now, a lot of people, uh, you know, I think we're going to see some weeding out thinning of the herd, as one of my mentors, Dan Kennedy, once uh, said, um, you know, in your opinion, do you think we're going to see if, uh, a drop in, in, in members uh, in you know, National Association of Realtor members? Yeah, I mean, there, there's certainly going to be anytime there's a shakeup. It's it's interesting to me how many people have elected in the United States to go on unemployment uh, benefits, which is the first time they've opened it up to independent contractors during this crisis, and how many people have stopped paying for things like their lockbox key, uh, you know, for for a month or two because they want to save the you know the the ten dollars a month. You know, those are the, that kind of thinking is very small minded thinking and that kind of thinking doesn't get you very far. And so I think you're going to see a lot of people um, get flushed out of the out of the out of the business. Now, the people that are working the business, the pros in the business are, are still doing business and they're doing it on a modified basis. But they're still uh, taking listings, putting transactions together, uh, even in the most locked down um, you know, areas of the country. Uh, San Francisco, New York, things like that, you know, they're, they're still putting deals together. And so the pros will always figure out a way to serve their clients. And that's one of the things I think is, is most key. And there's a lot of social shaming going right on right now with people that are working and, and um, you know, people that aren't working and sitting on the sidelines saying you shouldn't be out there. The reality is those people aren't out there because they're trying to make a buck. It's not about their commission. It's about their clients. And the people that have truly been successful and the professionals in this business are really about serving their clients and they have clients that have needs and that those needs need to be met. And it's either going to be met by somebody that's unscrupulous or it's going to be met by somebody that's a professional and the people that really succeed and the people that are, that are going to make it through this are the people that are actually putting their clients first and, and going out there and being brave. Um, but to your point, Michael, yeah, there's a lot of people that are scared and there's a lot of people that aren't brave and there's going to be a lot of people that go into other industries or go do something else because what some people don't understand is, is we can take a month off of, or a week off of real estate. Um, but if we take a month off of real estate, it's going to cost you four to six months on, on the back end. So while the company or the country may reopen up and we may get back to work, um, everybody else is getting paychecks as soon as they as soon as they show back up. In real estate, you're you're three to six months behind, you know, at that point in time. So if you're not working during this period of time, even on a virtual basis, and you're not your mindset's not there, you know, you are going to be hurting, uh, and you're you're going to be giving up a significant amount of your income for 2020, uh, and you may not recover until 2021, if at all. Yeah, that's a great point. So you're absolutely right. Uh, you know, that's the difference of entrepreneurs and independent contractors and employee, you know, being an employee, right? An employee, you know, when shelter in place is, um, 
you know, is removed and we, you know, people can start gradually going back to work or whatever, their, their paycheck will start up again. And yep. uh, as you, you put it, you know, we're three to six months out sometimes from our next closing, especially if you pause your business for 30, 45, 60 days. Um, so really, you know, really good uh, insight there. Thank you. Uh, what about, you know, same thing, I, I, I got to imagine, but s same, what kind of words of advice would you have for a, a team or a brokerage uh, that perhaps doesn't have a formal luxury division at this point, you know, when things uh, settle down and, and uh, you know, business kind of goes back to somewhat normal, what words of advice would you have for any offices or large teams looking to launch a formal luxury division and that could be an franchise level or independence i mean could be hey i'm i'm with you know xyz you know i won't name any large franchises but maybe they don't like the level of support they're getting from corporate um, so yeah. maybe they want to offer additional tools and support to their internal luxury division that they're not getting from the, the you know the, the you know L, you know the, the big corporation so to speak yeah um, so my, my, I've got a couple pieces of advice on that. First and foremost, understand that, that luxury is really about the details, um, and that's where you find luxury. The difference uh, between uh, a, luxury, um, a, a luxury house and a non-luxury house is, is in the smallest of things. And the, the more uber luxury you get, the higher those price points get, um, the more the little tiny details are, um, are more and more important. And so first and foremost, understand that luxury is in the details. And so you have to gear yourself around that. Um, the second thing is, 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 you know, find somebody, if you're a broker owner or if you're in charge of a franchise division and you want to open up something that's a luxury division and you don't understand luxury, you have to find somebody that really does. You have to ha have somebody that really understands the luxury, your luxury market, who's working in it every day. Um, because again, it doesn't necessarily have to be a really expensive enterprise. Most of the times luxury divisions are opened up and you can do it on a profit, you know, on a profit basis where it actually makes money. Mm -hmm. However, with that said, um, you know, you've got to have somebody that understands luxury and understands what, you know, what the needs are of the luxury market in your area. And third, and I think probably the most important thing is if you're really thinking about opening up a luxury division within a company, uh, you know, you need to call Michael. Uh, and and I'm, I know that uh, he didn't ask me to, to say this, but really, oh, there really is nobody, no, nobody better than doing the certification. So helping helping companies set up a love vision um, that, that really is your wheelhouse, Michael, and it's something that um, setting up the up the certification, setting up that program to help make sure that everybody within that division is operating on the same baseline is incredibly important. Um, you know, and that's something that, uh, yeah, I, I, that's probably the most important thing I would encourage people to do is to give you a shout. Um, and, but, you know, all those other things lead up to that, that conversation. Otherwise, you're just going to, I've seen companies spend a ton of money trying to open up or launch a luxury division. It's been disastrous because they just haven't asked the right people first before they started getting down that trail. Yeah, I mean, with the, you know, million dollar agent shows and everything else, um, you know, luxury is definitely appealing to a lot of agents. Agents have interest, but, you know, many agents, you know, lack that confidence, right? That knowledge to take it to that next level. And that's something that I know you're passionate about and, and, yep. and, and, and vice versa. Are there any things that maybe uh, someone that you're coaching up or, or someone that you're uh, doing some consulting with um, doing now today in, in this unique environment that we're in? Uh, it might not be earth shattering, might be, you know, just some of the basics, right? We talk about basics in football or blocking and tackling, yeah. and they're not yep. fun to do, but teams need to do it. You know, what, what are you seeing maybe some of your current clients uh, do to remain valuable and relevant in today's economy when shelter in place and maybe they can't show properties? Yeah, so a, a great question. And, and I think that it kind of goes back to that, that those fundamentals. We're doing things differently than we've done before. I'm a huge proponent about communication. And as everybody has been in shelter in place, one thing is people are, are really um, neglecting or feeling like they're they're needing uh, that connection with the outside world and so 
I'm going to say that the most successful things, although there's been a lot of really interesting things that have happened, it's one of the most successful things is just agents taking to social media and doing daily updates um, on, and they don't have to be long, but maybe five, 10 minutes, uh, two minutes if need be, do a video that just says, this is what's going on in the market. Because one of the things that, that we're seeing is, is things are changing day by day, hour by hour, especially as this thing you know started to unfold. And the people that became a resource and, and became the place that people could come and, and get a really clean idea of what's going on, that's where they're that's where they continue to go to. And so they there's been some people that have been able to make huge uh, impressions and really uh, amplify their market share out of the gate simply by focusing on communicating and stealing that away from some of the other people that just went into hiding, right? Some people just thought we're having the best year that they've ever had. They were coming off of the best run they've ever had. And all of a sudden the world stopped, right? Mm -hmm. And so some of those went to their second or third homes and they've just been hiding there waiting, you know, riding this thing out. And some of the scrappy, you know, underdogs have decided to take the, the, the uh, horse by the reins and start doing these updates and, and helping people understand um, the market, right? And what interest rates are doing and where the opportunities are and where um, people should be concerned, right? In the marketplace. And that's something that um, if you're helping people understand that you become a resource for that. And so that's been something I've seen has been tremendously helpful. Um, you know, I've also seen people shift to ad spend, um, you know, from different places on to online being very, very targeted with their online um, advertising and boosting their posts and things like that. There's been a whole lot of, of uh, new and creative ways to, to handle things. A lot of these, you know, Zoom lunch and learns and, and uh, different things where they're, you know, town hall meetings uh, where you can bring in some of your, some of your experts, your, your mortgage people and some of your affiliate people uh, to have conversations. And so those have also gotten a tremendous amount of traction with people that you don't normally get to talk to on a regular basis. Yeah, yeah very, very good points. Um, and I would agree with everything you said there. That was, that was insightful and, you know, bringing value. And, and I do know some friends in the industry that have done just that, right? They've gone to their, their, their lake houses or they've gone away on spring break and, and just, you know, stayed down there and, uh, you know, bringing value in these uncertain times and continuing to bring value is uh, something that a consultant, uh, an expert advisor does versus a salesperson. Absolutely. Um, you know, if you were to finish this sentence, I asked this of Megan on Friday, and I think it's uh, you know, her answer. You know, was was insightful, and I'd love your your thoughts. In your opinion, when the shelter in place is lifted, the agents and offices that will thrive will have blank in common. Uh, grit. Right. Uh, they're all you know, grit. Yeah. I mean, the, the people that are going to survive this are going to be people that um, had the fortitude to stick it out. Right. I mean, this is not a business where 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 people that are weak or afraid, sir, you know, do very well. This is a business that, you know, confident that, that celebrates and, and honors uh, confidence and courage. And um, and that's something that I'm not saying be reckless. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not endorsing that. Um, but what I am saying is you have to be brave. And if you're afraid to go out and work within the confines of the law that's in your area, and, um, you know, if the law is allowing you to go show properties in masks and gloves and you're choosing not to, right, then, then you're not being very brave, you know, yeah. um, and, if, if you're in a shelter in place and they're not allowing that in your area, then by all means, you know, do what you can do. But I think the people that are going to come out of the other side of this are, are going to be people that have grit and have the ability to uh, be very industrious, you know, because that's what, I mean, people with grit find a way, right? And that's, that's something that people coming out of the other side of this is going to find ways that they can do business, creative ways to, to, to problem solve. And um, right now they're gobbling up the market share by the people that are sitting at home, you know, sucking their thumb and trying to figure out what they're going to do, right? The people uh -huh. that are, are continuing to work creatively, work within the confines of the law, but pushing that envelope as much as they can. Um, you know, they want, to, they want to maximize every, every ounce of potential that they have. You know, those are people that are gaining market share. 
you know, and have been doing so for the last couple of weeks and will continue to do so while everybody else is under, you know, shelter in place orders. And they're going to come out of this other side and there's going to be some market shifts, market share shifts that you're going to see in your marketplace just because, and you're going to wonder what happened. Well, what happened was those people were working while everybody wasn't, every, while everyone else was afraid. Yeah. Grit. I love it. I love it. And you're absolutely right. I mean, I, you know, I, I don't remember a whole lot from high school and science class, but, you know, a body in motion stays in motion. You know, I think part of the reason um, that uh, the, the current administration did not want to sh- shut down all airlines um, completely is once it's, you know, it's, it's stopped it, to, to get things back up again uh, are very difficult. No different than your business and my business, Chris, or other real estate yeah. agents business, right? So staying active and, and, and because you hit that, that pause button for too long, you know, it's tough to, to get it back to where it is. It's just like atrophy in, in the body, right? Yep. If you, if you break a leg and you have a hard cast on, you, you know, atrophy sets yep. in, you're going to lose size and strengthen your muscle and it's difficult to get it back versus keeping movement going even if it's light weight activity yep very true very true Um, okay um if you were to move to uh, not you personally but if if you had an agent that you were coaching or a team uh, or large team or an office and they were going to be moving to a new area they said you know hey you know what Based on being in a small house or the weather that we're in, you know, with COVID-19, we, we want to pick up and move somewhere else or, you know, life happens, right? A, 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 guy, a guy I'm good friends with that just announced that they're going to be moving to North Carolina next, uh, you know, coming up. You know, what, yep. what are the agents, the teams, you know, what, what skill set, you know, what would be the first thing, you know, you'd recommend to a new agent that's looking to establish themselves? Um, and a new market, in this case, as a top luxury agent or team or, or team leader? Uh, great question. And so, uh, you know, I started off 25 years ago as a, as a real estate agent and, and have, have gone through a uh, real estate agent and being a manager and being a regional manager and owning my own boutique firm and, and then being an executive at three of the top companies in the country. And I will tell you that if I had to start tomorrow, uh, move to a new area, and Michael, you got to choose the area I was going to, and I got to start, and I, I had to start all over again. Uh-huh. Um, I would I would start off. You there, Chris? You there? All right, I lost you when you said you'd start off at like the best part, the suspense, the technology. So while I am waiting to hear back from you, uh, I'm going to give some people some suggestions. Oh, they, you there? Yeah, I'm still here. Yeah. Okay. So Sorry about I, that. I, I, no, no worries. So right when you said like you were just going into your answer, can, can you, yeah. let me repeat that. So what would you recommend to people that are going to a new area, starting from you know from scratch so to from speak scratch yeah 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 so if, so if i had to start from scratch i would throw myself headlong into uh market knowledge right the person that knows the market uh and knows what's going on in the market uh the inventory what's on the market that market knowledge is going to trump so many other aspects of of the business i mean you can learn the contracts you can learn all that stuff but uh, the, the reality is, is when you're talking to se- to a seller or to a buyer, if you know what's on the market and you know uh, which which way the house faces, and I'm not talking about just looking at stuff um, online through an MLS. I'm actually, you know, go get in the get in your car and go visit and go look at and preview all these homes. That would be my first and foremost thing. Um, and while I was doing that, I would be mounting a, a really substantial, very targeted um, brand awareness campaign on social media. Social media gives us some tools that never existed before to get very granular um, with the, the type of demographic that I want my brand to be seen. And so I'm going to start pushing that very quickly while I you know, go headlong and start looking at houses until... Uh, I go blind, really, um, you know, because once I can, I know all the inventory, I am going to, I'm going to trump people that have been in the industry and have had market share for 20 years in that area, uh, just because I know more about what's going on than they do. 
That's a, that's great words of advice. So, you know, that's part of growing your knowledge. I tell agents, grow your knowledge and your confidence will grow. So understanding the local market trends, pricing, um, the areas, attending broker opens, right? That's one way you can familiarize yourself or regular open houses. Uh, when, when, when an agent does join a, an office or a team or unless somebody starts their own, right? Attending other people in your offices, open houses, broker opens to, to, to familiarize yourself with yep. trends and price points. And that's one of the ways that you can, you know, grow your knowledge and confidence and, and understand the local market numbers. W would you agree with yep. that? Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, we are almost done here. A couple other questions I have, and um, then we'll open it up for some questions. And, and again, um, I want to make sure too, that uh, besides your, your, your website, um, we'll put in your email address uh, for the replay. We're going to be posting it to some areas for replays as well, Chris, because uh, people might have, uh, you know, might view this outside of the live feed yep. and they might have some questions for you. Um, uh, this, this one, this is the last question when it comes to, to necessarily real estate. And the other one is going to be our, our win at home question. But uh, do you have anything like that's funny or a memorable story or experience in real estate that comes to mind if you were to write a book with, you know, you know, funny things that happen in real estate? And is there anything that comes to mind maybe when you, you, you know, 20 plus years ago or, 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 or now yeah. today, or maybe it's a false letter. Maybe it's, you know, some buyer that was claiming that they were, you know, someone that they weren't, or I, I don't know. We're, we're just asking on the humor side of things. Yep. So, yeah, no, I, and I, I, it's a, I literally have hundreds of funny stories. You collect them in real estate, right? I, you've seen everything, um, uh, you know, things that are horrifyingly funny, uh, funny because they're horrifying, um, you know, such as representing, uh, you know, having an agent, that uh, fell asleep, you know, ended up getting in the liquor cabinet during an open house and falling asleep, you know, oh, naked on, on somebody's bed, you know, during an open house watching a football game um, to, oh, to you know, uh, a, a sign getting posted on the wrong property and, you know, somebody buying it, building a house. And then, you know, after the house is built, realizing that uh, th that the sign was actually placed on the wrong property and uh, they built the house on the neighbor's property and and the neighbor came in and said i don't want a house on my property you have to you have to tear it down um oh, you know so you, you've seen yes. so many things right but I, I the funny story that's truly I, i'm going to say the most most humorous um i'm going to i'm going to go back to my early days when i started real estate and, and it goes back to the the whole concept that confidence whether it's earned or not is more important than almost anything so i'd gotten a call um, on a mailer and I had just gotten into real estate. Literally, I had like had my license for like two weeks and um, and somebody called on this mailer and said, I'd like you to come uh, over and talk to me about uh, listing my home. And so um, I said, okay, I'd be glad to do that. You know, give me an hour. And so I had just gone through my two weeks to learn everything you need to, to know to be successful in real estate school. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Um, and, you know, did everything I they told me to do and, and, you know, did my the, the CMA and showed up to um, uh, showed up to this this house and I walk into the house. I walk to the kitchen table directly to the kitchen table and I sit down with the, with the, the lady and I you were serious. I, like, I'm, I'm going straight to that table. Yeah, Boom. Just straight to the table. I didn't even look at the house. I didn't. I, I literally walked from the front door to to the kitchen table, sat down opened up my CMA and I realized in this particular area in this, in this neighborhood, there were some, um, there was some patio homes on, on one side, some townhouses and things like that. And then there was some custom homes on the backside. This was one of the custom homes. Well, I didn't know that. And so I had done the CMA based on the, the townhouses, which, you know, were completely irrelevant to the pricing conversation. So as I'm going through my CMA, I realized that I have done the CMA and it's completely worthless, right? And so I, I, I'm i taking ripping pages out of it and throwing them over my shoulder. And uh, I finally realized I have no idea how to price this home. So I just looked at her and I said, well, what are you, what are you hoping to get for the place? And uh, she gave me a, an answer. And so I wrote it down in the contract and I you know, slid it across. This was back in the days before digital contracts. They were uh -huh. in triplicate. I said, you know, sign hard. The third, the third copy is yours, right? Of the listing contract. <laughs> she signed and I got up and I left. The total time from the time I left my car 
went to the kitchen table and yeah, back in my car was eight minutes. Um, and I had just taken this listing. So I, I, I got in the car, drove back to the office. Um, and, you know, was the manager asked me, you know, how to go. And I said, well, I got the listing. Here it is. Um, I said, well, you got to go right on the board. You know, a lot of fanfare for the first, you know, for the fact that I got my first listing. And I was thinking, I don't understand what's difficult about this whole real estate game. Right. Um, and then I realized as I, as I was, I had put it on the board. And as I was sitting there, I realized I don't have this lady's phone number. <laughs> I don't have anything. Like I, 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 I don't have anything. I said I was going to bring a, a lockbox and a and a sign back. Um, and you know the phone rings and it's her. And she she calls and she asks me at that point in time. She says, you know, is the is the commission negotiable? And I said it's not now. You know, it's already signed. So um, that was my first listing. And, and she didn't push um, back too much on that. That was your that was your answer. And, and... That was, my answer was like not anymore. It's signed oh. already. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So. Uh, um, so, uh, that in and of itself is funny. I finally, since she called, I said, well, now that I got you on the phone, what's your phone number, right? Um, yeah. so, um, our office preview was, was, um, uh, three days later. And so, you know, my whole office is now in preview. Now reminding you, I have never seen the house. I've only seen from the floor to the kitchen and back. That's it. I've not seen the rest of the house. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, we go to office to for the office preview, and um, I have my all of my you know cohorts there and stuff. We go through the house and all you know they had cleaned up the house for for the preview, and I look as I walk in. There's a bedroom that's off the the left side that I realize from the front door that had the door was closed when I had been there before, and now it's open. And when you walk in the in the uh, in the room, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'll keep this PG, it it was a it was a a room that had been outfitted to be a an adult dungeon. Um, oh my goodness! And, that, that was in the news um, recently, about a year ago. Like there was a, yeah, a, web, a house yeah. out east that had that. Yeah. So so it had been converted into a an adult dungeon, and all of their um, all of their their wares were on display. You know, in in these. Uh, nice built-in bookshelves oh. um and and so that was that was my first list thing we we you know had to get that cleaned up and you know, oh you know make sure that yeah it was it was a treat but really to the point i was saying earlier confidence is everything i didn't have the foggiest idea what i was doing right i just walked in i was just like i'm gonna go take a listing i don't i didn't know i didn't know how to price it i didn't know anything about it right um but I have learned through my through the years that um, I have learned far more from my mistakes than I have from my victories, and um, you know so that that confidence was everything, and and really helped me launch my real estate career, um, you know, very very successfully. And I you know could tell you hundreds of stories like that where, you know, I've gotten myself into in these crazy situations just because I just didn't know I wasn't supposed to. And, and did it sell, by the way? It did sell. Yeah, oh, we, good. we we ended up selling it. Um, and uh, yeah, it's another crazy story about how it sold. But, you know, yes, we ended up selling it and, and everything was fine. And we got them uh, we got them oriented and where they needed to go and uh, relocated, which was great. Oh, that's awesome. Well, one of the things we're asking all of our guests is, um, you know, in this shelter in place where people are working at home and and uh, you're working in environments that you're not used to right now. I'm doing it for my house. I'm, you know, we got technical difficulties for those of you that are yep. chiming in saying, you know, Mike, your camera's not on. I'm, I'm aware of that. But, you know, working at home, some of you have kids, some of your kids are doing the distant learning and, and mom and dad are the principal and gym teacher and everything else. Um, what, what recommendations do you have? Um, this is our win at home series, but, you know, what, yeah. besides, you know, we talk about tips for agents and broker owners to, to be successful during this time, but any words of advice for agents that are, uh, working remotely, um, that, uh, maybe our viewers and our listeners, uh, could be more successful as a, you know, as a husband, as a father, as a wife, as a, as a, as a mom, or just, a you know, parent, um, to calm stay calm and maybe help with stress levels uh, during this time, maybe something you're doing or uh, you know, some of your clients have had some success as this is a first for many of us, as, as you know. Yeah. You know, it, it's interesting because I, uh, uh, I, my, I have, I, 
raised three boys that were um, all homeschooled. So, you know, having them having them around and 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 in that environment, I I get that, and they're all out 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 of the house now and in college. But, you know, one of the things that I can say is, is get over yourself. Um, you know, we're used to doing things perfectly, and when we're thrown into an environment where things can't be perfect, uh, we just have to get over ourselves and, and learn from things, right? So, uh, never make the same mistake twice. That's been a mantra. Um, you know, and you you have to fail forward. And so, you know, as you do things, you learn, and each time you do something, you do it better next time. Um, mm-hmm. But you just uh-huh. you have to get over yourself, and you have to get over the fact that it's just it's not going to be perfect, uh, and sometimes it's not even pretty. So well, you, get, you just got to do what you got to do, um, and it, it'll work out in the end. Everybody is very, very understanding right now uh, with lack of perfection because everybody is in, an, is in a new environment and, and adjusting to this new way of, of working. Yeah, great, great advice, great advice. Uh, words, words of advice that uh, I, could, I could use, Chris, is, uh, you know, from a DISC personality, which, you know, there's Myers-Briggs, there's Colby, you know, there's yep. various personality uh, testing out there, but DISC, as you probably know, is, is the most common in the real estate industry. Many, many brokerages, you know, um, encourage it or, or offer it as part of, you know, their, their training and, and knowledge base. Uh, when I was a when I was a 51% owner of an exit realty franchise going back 2010, um, one of the gals I've had on my podcast, Angel Tucker, she does a great job of teaching on disc personality, but you know, those high D's, right. Are sometimes control freaks and uh, it's a little bit more difficult when things don't go perfectly. So um, really good advice. I appreciate that. Uh, Again, there are very few people, there are very few people in real estate that are successful that aren't, that don't have some control freak in them, regardless of where they find themselves on the disc personality. But you're right. Uh, for the control freaks, there that's a, it's a tough lesson and it's a tough pill to swallow. Yeah, it really is. Well, I I um I appreciate your time. I put on there uh, your website and then your you made available your email. So if anybody has um, a question for Chris and his company, and out of curiosity, uh, do you guys currently or uh, you know, do you have the ability uh, to help outside of the, the states in North America? Uh, yes. Yeah, we actually have a, a number of clients that are international. Um, and so we do have we do have the capability of help, helping people outside of outside of North America. That's good to know. Well, uh, a wealth of knowledge. Uh, appreciate your approach and appreciate what you bring to the industry, Chris, and I appreciate your time today. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me on, Michael. You're, you're absolutely welcome. And we'll get you um, a, a link with the replay. And uh, for those of you that um, are interested, this is something we're going to be doing, like I said, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We've actually are considering making it Monday through Friday because we've gotten such great free feedback just since Friday. But Wednesday, we have um, Wednesday we have uh, Tristan Ahumada from Lab Code Agents, and he brings a unique perspective of having agents from multiple markets, multiple shelter in places. Looking forward to Wednesday's training. And then Friday, we have Leslie Akers, who is the uh, president of the luxury division from Keller Williams. And then next Monday, we have uh, Teresa Kenny, who runs the largest real estate board in the United States, uh, which is the Miami Association of Realtors. Uh, they, they have a great event too every fall, by the way. Um, and um, so we look forward to uh, Wednesday. Chris, I appreciate your time again. And uh, everybody have a great rest of your Monday. Keep raising the bar in real estate. And if you have any questions for me personally, you can chime in below or shoot me an email, michael at marketingluxurygroup.com. Michael at marketingluxurygroup.com. Take care, everybody. Thanks, Chris. Thank you, everybody. You Appreciate bet. it. Take care. Bye. Right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Should I still stay down? No, you're good. You're good. Richard, they've been doing really successful.